Welcome to the Mindless Pursuits Unreal Engine Marketplace review for the Distance Measuring Tool by Ben Burkhart. The date of this review is March 14th, 2016. The supported Unreal Engine builds for this product are 4.8 through 4.10, and the build used in the review is 4.10.4. Technical specifications for this product are, contains four blueprints, one example map, and one material, and its intended platform is the PC. I'd be curious to know what it would take to get this to work on the Mac, but so be it. Testing rig, not really relevant for this particular product. This is a tool we're going to look at. So here's the tool preview level that Ben Burkhart supplies in the package. So what this tool is, it's, it's a combination of four different tools that measure distances, or in this case, for this tool, the circumference and diameter of an area to help you put things into real world terms instead of Unreal Units. Now, if you're used to working on Unreal Units, not a big deal. And for me, I got this because I was curious for laying out terrains and figuring out distances, but I think in most game stuff, you're probably not going to worry about it. In fact, the first game that I've been developing uh, takes place in a human cardiovascular system. And as such, I'm not going to use this anyway because the scale of my game pieces has nothing to do with the scale of what the game is supposed to be portraying. But this could still be very useful for terrain work or for other things where you want to ensure you're matching up well with real-world materials, or not materials, real-world environments and other things. <clears throat> So the first tool here is one that, uh, as it says, measures the circumference and diameter of an area using the input radius. So you go over to it, you click on it. On the right here, if you see where my mouse is, there's a radius of 200. If we change that to be 300, for instance, we hit enter. You see it updates the circumference and the diameter automatically. That's pretty cool. Now, if we can do this, one thing that would be awesome to do, and as far as I can tell, it's not in this release. Maybe it's something he will consider for the future. But if you could use either the spline tool or a rectangle or something else to get square footage or estimated square footage of an area. Not certain. If there's really a lot of use for that in the game, to be perfectly honest with you, but if you can do this, I would think it would be... Just a step away to do the other, maybe. I could be wrong. The next tool in the set is, a, as it says, a more complex measurement tool for measuring the distance of a non-straight path using a spline. So if we click on it again here, you can see the spline that's been set up. And if you move elements of the spline around, you can see that the total distance is changing based upon the spline, or go up, down, whatever. So this could be useful for measuring out things like tracks or running areas or other stuff that you want to cover the actual ground, or you want to measure the actual length of the path, path going on, being covered, which could be pretty cool. Here's, as it's put, a simple tool for measuring a distance between two defined points set by the designer. So you drop this into your blueprint, it comes with these two points. You can click on a point, move the point around, and this is the distance between these two points is what it's being shown here. So that's very straightforward, good for just doing quick measurements when you don't want to leave something in place. And then last but not least, there's this one which is the simplest of the ones which is you add it in and you measure the distance between the two actors. So when you add it to a level, you'll see that there is a spot here where you can choose the actors. Let's just drop in a random actor for the heck of it. We'll grab something from this starter content folder here. Props. Let's grab a chair. So we'll drop in the chair. Click on that again, and we want to see the distance between target point one, which I think is that one, yep, and the chair. So you would change actor two to be the chair, 
you can see it update now there is a caveat for this let's say we take the chair and we move it over you notice this is not updating real time I think that's because unlike all the other tools you know these actors exist outside of this and therefore it can't automatically grab the information about them but if you click on it and then you go over here where it says refresh look at the bottom right and you'll see my arrow where it says refresh click on that and it'll update the distance so basic but very useful so having said that with the usefulness of the tool there are some gotchas first from an organizational standpoint when you create this first you can't add it to an existing project it doesn't support that currently I don't know why uh, this is a tool that definitely should be modified to being added to a project not having to create a new project and then copy the folder over to use it uh, I have to say that's kind of ridiculous and second there is no reason for this tool whatsoever to include the giant amount of starter content it, it does not need the starter content at all to work and this just adds tons of bulk to your download and to your package for nothing so this really needs to get out of here within the distance tool folder itself you know things are pretty well managed since there's not much to it anyway you've got your four blueprints and such so you know that's organized but again it's kind of a big letdown that you have to create a new project and then copy this over and it's definitely an issue that includes all this starter content so let's look at the documentation there isn't actually a dedicated website for Ben at least not that's noted so if you go to the content detail on the page uh, you'll find a video link for the program of course you'll find what the tool can be used for <clears throat> uh, which is nice you can use a custom skill multiplier all this stuff I am a little <clears throat> I won't say disturbed that's not the right word because it's not the, the biggest issue in the world but the fact that there's no dedicated website and you have to go to the forums means you have no idea how many comments you're gonna have to sort through to find information that is useful to what you want if you go down you look at the comments on this page here uh, there there are things here's a comment on the starter content you know why is it in there that's from 2015 and took almost a month for him to respond to that and <laughs> say so you know that he didn't do it but I, I don't know the the history behind that but either way it, as we saw it's still in there now um, it was still in there in the beginning of February so that that really needs to be taken care of and this this response time of almost a month is very concerning from a support standpoint if we go into the thread that's attached there you can get more information for instance this is the only place where it talks about the refresh it doesn't say anything about how to make that distance update here so if you were using it and you didn't know about that you you wouldn't get it from anywhere in the official documentation you would have to go to this thread to find out that you have to refresh after moving the actors I think that's a problem it should be noted on the actual page here for that but the rest of it is pretty straightforward he talks about how to do it and uh, there, there's stuff in here even for the the forum you know some make something it takes a couple days to respond and don't get me wrong people get busy I get it but you know a month for the starter content answer that that was way too long from a support standpoint so my ratings for this the tool asset ease of use it's actually a pretty easy tool to use um, you know the refresh I don't think is a particularly burdensome thing to have to do when you're working with the tool um, I, I don't know they could do a lot to make it easier but at the same time I think there are things that could be added for measuring out areas I think that the refresh need should actually be called out within the tool itself so if that tool has that and then maybe in the text above the or underneath the actual measurements it might have smaller type that says you know remember to click the refresh button in the detail tab something like that that lets people know 
So I'll give that an 8 out of 10 because it's still very good. Uh, there are no extras in this, so that's not applicable. For the documentation, I'm giving it a 5 out of 10 because uh, I don't think sending people to a forum thread is necessarily good documentation. I think that the refresh should be covered in the actual page on the site. And <clears throat> if you consider comments part of, or response to comments as part of documentation, I should really add a support category, but then, you know, that's kind of let down too. So a 5 out of 10 for that. The package organization could actually have been a 10 out of 10 very easily, except for all the starter content. I had to whack that way down because there's no reason for that starter content to be in there, and there is no reason why this has to be a new project to be created. Then finally, the demonstration map. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. They're simple. They show you the tool. They give you examples of it. There could be some added text to say, you know, here's how you use this, but that should be in documentation anyway for people to go and look at. So the, the maps themselves do exactly what they're supposed to. I give those a 10 out of 10. So my final rating is a 6.25 out of 10, which is good. You know, it's still a tool that I can recommend for people who have a specific use for it. You know, they're going to get the value out of it if they really want to measure the distances. But, you know, it, it's not as good as it could be. And again, the failure is partially in your documentation and a large part in having a ton of added content that does need to be there by including the starter package. So get those out of there and, you know, this review would actually be a lot higher. So that's it. If you liked that review, please click the like button. If you are not currently a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Whether you like the reviews or if you just want more game development content, we do all of that here at Mindless Pursuits. You can find more information on Mindless Pursuits at these links. And as always, I want to thank you for all of your interest and support. Take care.